Hey guys, this is Sarah and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about my most recent audiobook reads. I hope you guys can forgive the lighting situation. I've yet to kind of understand how to use proper lights. Not that they're proper lights, but just these basic lights that I have. The first audiobook that I wanted to talk to you guys about is Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore by Robert Sloan. Robert Sloan recently released a new book that's supposed to follow foodie culture called Sourdough, um, but for all intents and purposes we're supposed to be talking about Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. And this novel follows our main protagonist Clay as he is in a search for a job in the 2008 recession and he happens to find work as a clerk at this 24-hour bookstore that is owned by Mr. Penumbra. This 24-hour bookstore is not like your usual bookstore. The clientele seems kind of peculiar and they seem to check out these specific archive books that Clay, as a clerk, is not allowed to check out, and so there is a intrigue there in that we don't know why Clay A is not allowed to check these out, and just why this bookstore is A, so very quiet, B, open for 24 hours. So this novel also looks at like technology and the book world, and how technology can influence the book world and vice versa. It also um, looks at this idea which has existed forever in the written world, world of being immortalized by a text and what that can mean. Um, Apparently Robert Sloan is known, and I can attest to this from having listened to this audiobook, of really doing like um, a dissection of specific like microcultures, like book culture and in the sourdough food culture. And so it was really interesting following this adventure of Clay working as a clerk, not really knowing what's happening, while also trying to, I don't know, because he wasn't understanding why the store was so quiet he tried to incorporate technology into getting more of a clientele for Mr. Penumbra's uh, bookstore so you follow kind of all these little aspects of it and it was really fun to be in this like world of where like there was a legit society of readers particular to Mr. Penumbra's bookstore. I, I ended up giving it three out of five stars. It was a fun read but I don't think it'll stick with me like two years from now. Um, but if you like book culture and you just need something nice to listen to, I definitely recommend this. The next audiobook I wanted to talk to you guys about is called Red Parts, A Story of a Trial by Maggie Nelson. Maggie Nelson has been more recently acknowledged for her novel The Argonauts as well as her poetry collection Bluets. I fully recommend Bluets if you haven't checked it out. It's all about the color blue and yeah that's a very big way of describing it but that's what I'm gonna go for right now. Anyway, the Red Parts uh, autobiography of a trial follows Maggie as she explores her aunt who was murdered brutally in 1965 as new forensic evidence shows that whilst they thought previously that she was killed by this very well-known serial killer, that that DNA evidence showed that that actually wasn't the case, that she wasn't killed by this very famous serial killer. And so the novel follows the becoming of that evidence, Maggie and her family trying to wrap their minds around how this supposed truth of it being that one serial killer that killed their daughter, their aunt, etc, 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 their sister is not true and you know having to go through that trauma again and Maggie in particular because she wrote a collection of um, poems in Jane's perspective, she kind of starts to relive or 
what she imagines Jean went through. And so this audiobook was interesting because it's such a personal like retelling of, you know, these very traumatizing and very like forensic moments. She, excuse me, walks you through like seeing the person who was accused and like her grandfather's reaction to it since her grandfather was very um, kind of against having his truth taken away from him and Maggie's mother as well didn't really want to talk about what was happening she kind of wanted it to leave it be but Maggie in that I think she's somebody who likes to research a lot and really like get to the the details of things she couldn't leave it be so it shows that tension between each individual family member but it also shows towards the end the solace that it can bring to like finally like know for quote unquote sure that everything's going to be laid to rest Another important point that I forgot to bring up about this uh, audiobook slash novel is that it does tie into the whole, not retelling, but the whole introspection of it all that, you know, the way women are treated as victims, there is a particular, um, I hate to say victims, but it's like people who have crimes committed against themselves. Um, there is a particular way of handling these things in the press as well as just handling them in every individual level and trial and then in just their remembrance and she is really keenly aware of that and she calls things out throughout the novel so um, that I definitely appreciate it and she makes it a point not to just make this it is yes a personal introspective memoir text but it also looks in a whole about how there have been crimes committed against women throughout time and how these have been portrayed. I gave it three out of five stars just because on my particular reading of it I felt less empathy than I would have hoped to. The third audiobook that I listened to was called Revenge 12 Dark Tales. Oh, it's actually 11. I just added an extra revenge tale because you know I don't know. <laughs> but so, the third novel I read is called Revenge 12, 11 Dark Tales by Yoko Ogawa. And I've read her other novel, The Housekeeper and the Professor, which is much more light and whimsical than this novel. So, if you're going from that or vice versa, anticipate that these are very individual stylistic tales. I still think that Yoko Ogawa is an amazing writer, super strong writer, but there is a whimsy to the professor and the housekeeper that there is not at all to Revenge 11 Dark Tales, as the title would hint at. So Revenge 11 Dark Tales has the, as you can expect, overriding theme of revenge of what pushes one to feel revenge and then how one can enact that and the different ways one can enact that and then the different repercussions or lack of repercussions for revenge. I am in awe of Yoko Ogawa's ability to tie in these 11 narratives. Every There are little details that just are brought into another story like you'll see a cake in a bakery and someone's emotional reaction and four stories later you'll have the story behind that emotional reaction and it's just I would never be able to accomplish something like that so I am in complete awe of that ability to tie in stories so very well. I must say that I end up giving this 4 out of 5 stars or 4.5 out of 5 stars because there were certain stories that I loved more than others. Um, but I still, this is one of the strongest short story collections I've read this year and I definitely, definitely recommend it. I don't really want to talk to you too much about this particular one, not because of lack of things to say, but mostly because I think it's something that is best best read without too, too much knowledge, without having an anticipation of what you're getting into, and just as like being receptive to that emotion 
of revenge, I suppose. It eases you into it, I think, but um, yeah, I can't read wait to read more from Yogogawa's. I have still the diving pool and Hotel Iris, and I'm hoping to pick those up very soon. And the last audiobook that I want to talk to you guys about in this particular video is Jacoby by William Ritter. Jacoby is a really fun series. This is the first one. I've only read the first one so far. And we follow our main protagonists, or two main protagonists, Abigail and Jacoby. Abigail is a young woman who this takes place in a very Sherlock Holmes-esque time frame, which I believe was the Victorian time frame, but my brain is blanking. But just think Sherlock Holmes. Um, and of course, in that time frame, women had certain things required of them, and they weren't able to just do as they wanted, which is frankly bullshit. But anyway, so Abigail, in spite of all this, she has a history of doing what she wants. So she had taken money from her parents that was supposed to send her to boarding school and invested it in a like untoward like archaeology expedition. Anyway, things went to went the wrong way. And so she finds herself without a job, without lodging, and she can't really tell her parents because she clearly messed up, right? So she is looking for work when she stumbles onto Jacoby, who is a detective of sorts. However, he's a detective who investigates paranormal-ish crimes, crimes that have an unexplainable aspect to them. I know what you're thinking, you're like, Sarah, like, it sounds like it's been done before. But honestly, the way that Jacoby tackles the whole, like, very Sherlock feeling but also like very much in fairy tales and the way that they like give the the magical creatures like specific ways of being felt very original actually so don't don't let that dissuade you from this um and Jacoby is a very very much like Sherlock kind of blunt type of personality however he does give Abigail her merit as she like proves herself to him and you know I'm a sucker for very fierce and stubborn women who do what they want to do at the end of the day so I quite enjoyed this I think I gave it four out of five stars or 3.5 one of the two and I recommend it I can't wait to check out the other two books in the series it's a trilogy and I'm hoping to listen to them on audiobook because I did enjoy the audiobook version of this as well. So let me know if you've listened to any really good audiobooks that I should add to my, you know, to read audiobook list. And I will talk to you guys in another video soon and be well.